Hi guys and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to talk about one very interesting topic that confuses many beginners, but it is very important to understand it and as you will see from this video it's not actually that hard. Uh, so that is the topic of mutex and the first thing that I want to explain is what is mutex. Mutex is a term that is related to multi-threading in C++ and it stands for mutual exclusion. That means that um, mutex is a way to ensure that inside a multi-threaded application two threads cannot access the same code at the same time because that could cause many problems in your application. In this video, I will give you a short real life example of mutex so that you can understand the concept. And if you want to learn more and if you want to understand more about multi-threading and how it's used in big projects and to build applications that we use every day, then I would recommend you to watch my practical programming course. The link will be in the description. And in that course, multi-threading is just one of the many topics that you will learn because you will get all of the necessary skills so that you can start building applications yourself and get a job once you finish that course. The course is going to be launched very soon and since you are my YouTube viewer, I want to make sure that you get a special treatment when compared to other people. So I will put a link in the description that you can use to sign up and once the course is launched, I am going to send you a special discount. But as you will understand, the number of people who can get this discount is limited. So if you are interested, it's completely free to sign up, but do it right now so that you can secure your place. So with that being said, let's get back to the topic of mutex. As I said, mutex is a way to prevent multiple threads from accessing the same part of the code at the same time. And if you're not familiar with the concept of threads, I already made another video where I explain multi-threading and the topic of threads, and I will link that video here and also in the description, so make sure to watch it before you continue watching this video. So what would be an example of mutex in real life? Imagine the following situation. Let's say that you want to buy a supercar and your friend also wants to buy a supercar, but you don't have enough money. For example, you have 1 million and he has 1 million, but the car costs $2 million. So you decide to buy that car together and to share it. But one thing that you need to keep in mind is that if you are sharing that car, you cannot use it at the same time, which means that if your friend is driving, you will have to wait. And if you are driving, your friend will have to wait. So those are the limitations. Now let's see how we can simulate that scenario in code. So what I want to do is I want to create a function of return type void. I will call it drive car. Okay. And here I will receive one string parameter. It will be string driver name. Okay. And here I will simulate the driving of a car. So I will say C out and then let's print driver's name and I will say here is driving okay and then I will say C out driver name and then let's say is done driving and let's put another end line and then here in between I will simulate the duration so the period while you are driving the car and I will do that by sleeping this thread so in order to do that, you need to say include and then thread. Oh, what is this? Include thread like this. And now here I can say this thread. Okay, and now let's say sleep for. And here I will use chrono. Okay, and let's say seconds. And I will say, for example, that you are driving for two seconds. Okay, so this is our drive car function. And now what I want to do is I want to simulate the situation where you and your friend are sharing the same car. So how am I going to represent you and your friend? Well, I am going to represent that with two threads. So let's create thread, let's say T1. And here I will pass two parameters. The first one is going to be the method that this thread is executing. And that is this drive car. So what is going to be the task and the job of this thread? And then the second thing is, since this method receives one parameter, I am going to pass it here. And that is going to be the name of the driver. So I will say Saldina. Okay, so this is the first friend, the first thread. And then let's create another one. Let's call it T2. Its job is going to be the same function. And 
the name of the driver will be, let's say, Elon. Okay, so now these two threads are two friends that share the same car. And now if I run this program, we are going to see what will be the result of this application that we have written. But one thing that we need to do first is the following. I need to say t1.join and then also t2.join. And this basically means before this program ends, make sure that both of these threads have finished what they were doing. So please don't end the program until both of these threads finish their job. Okay, so you need to put this part here, otherwise you are going to get an error. So now let's see what is going to happen when we start the program. Okay, Saldina is driving, Elon is driving, and then Saldina is done driving, Elon is done driving. I see a problem here, and that is the following. How can Elon drive the car before I finish driving the car? So clearly we have a problem here where two threads or two friends are accessing the same resource at the same time, which should not be possible. What should happen instead is that I should drive the car, and then once I finish driving the car, then Elon can start driving and then when he finishes driving, our application will end. So now let's see how we can fix this problem. So in order to solve this problem, we use mutex and you can understand mutex as a lock that is used in order to lock certain part of the code while one thread is executing it. And then once that thread finishes, it will unlock that code so that other threads can access it. And that part of the code that you want to lock is called critical section. So in our case, our critical section is this part of the code here. So before one driver starts driving the car, he will have to lock it here. And then once he's done driving, so that would be here, he can unlock the car so that other drivers, other threads can access that code. So now let's see how we can write that code. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to include mutex here. Okay. And then you need to create a mutex that you will use in order to lock this critical section. I will say mutex and let's call it car mutex like this. And then here I will lock my code. So I will say unique lock of mutex. I will call it car lock. And to this variable, I will give this mutex that we created. Okay, so this is how we lock the critical section. And then here, once you are done driving, what you need to do is you need to say car lock unlock. Okay. So by simply doing and adding these two lines of code, we have locked this critical section and now we shouldn't have the problem that we previously had. So let's start the program and let's see the result. Okay, Saldina is driving and then Saldina is done driving and only then Elon can start driving. Okay, another thing that you should know is that there is a shorter way in order to lock this critical section. So instead of using unique lock, you can use lock guard. How? Well, it's actually very simple. So you simply say lock guard like this. The rest of the code stays the same. And then here you can even delete this part where you are unlocking your critical section. And we will come to that part and explain why in a moment. But first I want to test the application, let's see. So Saldina is driving and then Saldina is done driving and only then Elon can start driving. And then once he's done, the application finishes. Okay, so let's see what is the difference between lock guard and unique lock. Lock guard is easier and the more simple way to use mutex and its characteristics are following. Lock guard is going to lock your critical section at the same line where you create it. Also, it is going to unlock the code automatically once this object goes out of scope. And that is usually at the end of the block or at the end of the, or at the end of the function. So in our case, that is here at this closed curly bracket. And because it is unlocking your code automatically, that means that you cannot unlock it manually. So lock guard cannot be unlocked manually. That is the first thing. 
And then the second thing, which is benefit, is that because it is unlocking the code and releasing mutex automatically, it will make sure that your code is always unlocked and that the mutex is released properly. Even if your application has an exception or whatever happens, your code is going to be properly unlocked and the mutex will be released. So that is benefit. So when you would use this lock guard, you would use lock guard when you want to lock a short, well-defined block of code like we have here. On the other hand, unique lock is harder to use, but it has more options. Let's return this to unique lock like this. And here you will notice that I have unlocked my code manually. And that is one thing that you have to do with unique lock. So you need to unlock manually. And if you forget to do that, or if you don't know how to do it, when to do it, then you can cause huge problems in your application. That is downside, but it also has a benefit. And that is that unique lock can be used in order to defer locking, which means that you can delay locking because of different conditions and situations that happen in your application. And also you can use the same object of unique lock in order to lock and unlock your code multiple times during the lifetime of this object, which is something that you couldn't do with lock guard. So as I promised at the beginning, this video is going to be very easy to understand. So I hope that now you do understand the idea and the concept of mutex in programming. And if you want to learn more, if you want to understand how this works in big applications that you use every day and how you can build those applications as well, then I invite you to sign up for my practical programming course. The link will be in the description and it is completely free to sign up. And in that course, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know in order to become a developer and start building the applications that you want to build. And also, since you are my YouTube viewer, I will make sure to send you a special discount as soon as the course launches. So that would be all for this video. All of the code is going to be pinned in the comment. And if you have any questions or any suggestions for my future videos, leave those in the comment section as well. And if you enjoyed this video and you have learned something new, then definitely give it a thumbs up and say to the YouTube algorithm that you wanted to recommend you more videos like this, where you can learn something new and where you can learn to code. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in some other video. Bye.